On this video I'm going to talk about this thing. This thing is a 5.8 GHz 150CH and I think it means channel OTG FP receiver for smartphones. It'll also work on PCs. Um, <coughs> excuse me. It comes from Banggood and it's currently uh, retailing at the price of £21.18p. Basically I bought it because I've got a set of FPV goggles, I've got the EV800 eSheen goggles and they're great, they're fantastic, they're nice and cheap but they haven't got any DVR facilities on them and I thought I really want to record my footage. Um, one of the things I'm doing today is I'm actually recording this video on my Mobius mini camera because normally I record on my phone and I'm using my phone to actually show this thing off. Um, the Mobius mini is great and it's very light but it's not actually going to sit on a quadcopter about that size. That's my King Kong Q100 on there, and it just wouldn't lift it. That is my um, 150 Tarot Combi thing. It's got Pico in there. It's a bit of a strange machine. But the um, Mobius will actually lift, uh, fly with that on it. Um, sorry, the quadcopter will fly with the Mobius on it, rather. Um, but it's a bit heavy. So sometimes it's just best to record the video feed natively um, off what you're actually getting from the camera. So I bought this thing um, and basically it comes and you get nothing other with it other than the unit. A little micro USB to micro USB cable which effectively does OTG. It's, um, it converts, normally you have micro on one end and full size um, USB on the other. And you get a, an aerial, um, an antenna, you get one of those, you can easily put one of those on. The pin is on the unit, there's no pin in that bit, there's no pin in that bit. I never can remember whether these are RPSMA or SMA, I think they might be RPSMA, but I could be completely wrong on that. Anyway, so you get the unit and you don't get any software, you don't get any instructions. <coughs> Excuse me. So the best thing to do is plug it into an Android phone. I'm using an LG G4 and it's worked straight off the bat. Um, I've also mucked about trying to use a Huddle tablet and one of the apps is very happy and one of the apps isn't. It's something to do with internal OTG software which is built into the phone. You can actually download additional drivers if you want to but I wouldn't know how to actually go about that because I haven't had to need to. Anyway, so the first app I've actually been using is GoFPV. It's this and the other one are both actually free. They've got little bugs in them. Sometimes they actually crash. This one's um, not crashed, but it basically stops recording. And I wonder if it's when the phone goes to sleep or the screen goes off or whether it's got a recording length of time on the thing. So um, be a bit careful. But this thing does um, something which is rather useful. It actually does side-by-side -side video recording. And as you can see at the moment, I've got two um, images. It's not 3D because the source out of the quadcopter is not actually 3D. But what you actually do is if you've got one of these things, this is a, <coughs> a 3D viewer for a smartphone. It's basically a posh virtual of Google Cardboard. You can put your phone in there, you flip that up, and then you feed the cable out of this gap here around the front onto that small little bit of Velcro. And I've Velcroed on the other side of this unit and put that on and you could use these as actual goggles there is a little bit of latency and I'm going to see if I can get something to show you what the latency is like so let me see if I can do this it's a tiny bit um, if you're not a real speed demon of a flyer, you could probably fly with these things on. It's nowhere near as bad as Wi-Fi latency. Um, if you've got somebody who wants to come out with you and you're wearing your goggles and they're going, I'd love to know what you're seeing, put the phone in this unit and they can sit and they can do a fly along with the thing. So that is the Go FPV um, software. Let me come out of here. The other software that actually you can actually put on is FPV Droid. <coughs> Basically you click connect and that also works. That had to install a sub program. It included 3DR services. I believe it's actually set up to um, fly 
Wi-Fi type quads on there. I'm not sure what I actually needed 3DR services for, but I did need to install those. Again, I've got record, I've got a camera on there, I've got some settings. Some of these things you can actually change from PAL to NTSC, but there's not a lot of actual settings in there. Um, they both um, record to their own directories, and I think they both point at the phone memory. I'm not sure that you can actually point it at the SD card memory on there. So, what else did I want to actually say on here? Um, not really a lot more. Um, this sort of just worked rather well. Just sort of worked straight out the uh, box. Um, I've got some FPV recording um, from it. And I'll try and put this on at the end. Um, see if I can cut two videos together to show you. Um, but for, say, £21.18p, I really think it's worth a go. I think it's, um, it's a nice little bit of kit that you can do your recording on um, and just uh, basically go from there. Uh, what else was there? Anything I meant to actually mention? I think that's probably about it. But yeah, I would really recommend these things. Um, it's worth playing around with. Ah, no, I know, didn't know what I wanted to do. Scanning. If you push the tiny little button on the unit, it begins to scan. <clears throat> the line runs across and you get nothing, nothing, nothing and in a second you'll get a great big peak come up. Lovely, just on time. And it keeps scanning and it gets to the end and it says, right, I found a signal at 5825 megahertz and it tunes into that. If you've got multiple things flying, it'll find all the signals. I've had that kicking out I've had that kicking out at the same time um, and it'll find both but switching between the two of them is a bit flaky it's all on that one little button you can go boop 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 and just go up um, the frequencies it takes a little while or you can basically make sure that the quad and the video transmitter next to this is the one you want um, it will generally grab the one with the best um, video feed and um, best power. I suppose if that's 25 megahertz and that's 200 megahertz that you might actually find that it'll pick up the wrong one for you. But yeah, it's a nice little unit. It's worth the money. Uh, give it a go. Any questions, uh, post them below. Thank you very much for watching.